Our next goal is going to be to localize this application. That means we're going to make it support multiple languages. So let's go ahead and see how we might go about doing that with a WPF application. All right, so just as a reminder, we have a uh, WPF application. Uh, it has this XAML here. And then we created a view model, which is not acting as a view model quite yet. Uh, we haven't switched over to using the MVVM pattern. However, uh, we may do that in the future, and so we named it a view model. It also has some strings in it that will need to be localized, and so I'm going to be translating it to English today. And so we'll need the English version of each of these, and so I'll just use Google Translate as kind of a rough translation, and uh, that'll get us to where we need uh, for this version, I think. So, so uh, what I would like to do is introduce you to a NuGet package called WPF Localize Extensions, and for this particular type of project, I think that's going to be a really good fit. So let's go ahead and add that NuGet package. We'll go to WPF Localize Extension, Extension, not Extensions. We'll install that. We'll hit OK, accept all the terms and conditions. All right, and that's installed. And then over in our main window XAML, we're going to need a new namespace. And so we'll include that up here. And then we need to set a couple of properties on the window that give this uh, NuGet package a little hint about what it's going to be looking for as far as what our dictionaries call, are called and that sort of thing. We're going to need to create a dictionary called strings. And I'm going to do that by creating a new folder. So new folder. And I'm going to call it resources. And I'm going to go ahead and say strings.resx. And this is going to be our base library that's going to hold our default strings. And then we're going to need a library for each of the cultures that we want to support. So in this particular case, we're going to be using German. It's actually Swiss German. And so we're going to create a, another resource dictionary for that. That's going to be strings, which is the base name of our dictionary. It's going to be the culture code, which in this case is going to be DE capital CH dot resx. And then we're going to need the American dictionary as well, American English. And so I'm going to go ahead and add one of those. It's going to be strings, our base name again. It's going to be EN capital US resx like that. Uh, this library does require that the access modifier on your dictionaries be set to public. And so we'll need to do that for each of these. So we'll go through and change these to public. And public. Okay, perfect. And then we need to start figuring out what strings we want to localize. This is a good example here, this text block, it's a label. And if I feed this into Google Translate, it comes out as number of plates. And so I am going to create a new entry in my dictionary called, uh, well, actually, I'm not going to name it yet because this is going to be on a XAML control. And so one of the nice things about this NuGet package is that I can say name equals and then number of plates uh, text block block. And then over here, instead of this text, I can say lx lock, or lex lock, lex lock, like that. And it's going to search the dictionary for something that's named this name, the name of this control. We're going to go ahead and put that as the name of our entry here. Yep. And then we'll use the original text there. And in the US version, we're going to use that same. And then this is going to be number of plates like this in the US English. And then uh, the original language, of course, is going to be the original. So 
uh, number of te plates text block, and then this text here. Okay, let's go ahead and build. And you can see because I selected the design language of English, it put the English version number of plates instead of the original German translation. So if I change this from English to German, then I should be able to go back and see that the German language is now used. And so it's a nice little utility or a nice little feature of the library to be able to change that on the fly. Okay, sorry about that cut there. I had forgotten to do one step uh, in the setup. And so over in the app XAML.cs, uh, you do need to create a constructor uh, for the app. And then you need to set the current culture uh, to the culture that the localized dictionary class is using. Um, I assumed that it was going to pick it up, but it looks like you do need to set that. Otherwise, it's going to use the default values that are inside of the uh, strings.resx instead of the strings.culturecode.resx. Uh, and so I can go through and change all of my text inside of my XAML and uh, make it so that it is going to be localized and it's going to come up in the language that the user's computer is set to. So I won't make you sit through all that. Obviously, I'll fast forward that and we'll get that changed and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we have all of the XAML converted over and as you can see from the design view, it looks like everything is going to be in English if the user is using the uh, US English culture. And now we can move on to the view model. The view model has some text hard-coded into it, and that is going to need to be replaced as well. Uh, library, uh, the NuGet package that we're using, as far as I can tell, doesn't have a super friendly way to grab something out of the dictionaries, and so let's uh, add a class that will let us do that with relative ease. So uh, inside of our resources, I'm going to go ahead and add localized strings class. And I have that already made, so I won't bore you with typing that out. And I will paste that in here. And we're going to need to import a namespace and another namespace. All right. And so what this is, is that it's sort of a really, really basic uh, singleton that will have two methods on it. Actually, it'll be a method and an indexer. And one method allows you to set the culture, and that'll come in later. You'll see why uh, I want to do that later. And then there'll be an indexer where you can just pass it in uh, the name of a key, and it'll return the string back out. The way that the NuGet package is set up, the, the library the NuGet package provides, is that you have to pass in a lot of different things to get uh, your value back out, plus it comes out as an object and not a string because this type of dictionary can hold different things other than strings. And so I went ahead and just wrapped it in this uh, little class so that we can use it in sort of a more user-friendly way. All right, so over to the view model. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this here. And if I do a Google Translate on that word, it comes out to mean no. I'm going to assume that pro that's probably not a super great translation. Maybe it means none or something to that effect. And so I'm going to call the key in our dictionary, our re the resource dictionary over here, I'm going to call it none. And I'm going to go ahead and use the word none for that particular value uh, because I think that's what the original author's intent was and Google Translate may not have translated that quite correctly. All right, and I believe it was lowercase, and so we're going to go ahead and set to lowercase, and then the original translation is here. Okay. Now, when I want that string, when I want to translate that to the 
language that's being used. Instead of hard coding this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say localized strings instance, and then I'm going to say none like that. Okay. And so this is going to uh, occur when I select RAID 0. That's what's going to come out for fault tolerance. And so if we wanted to test that, and we're going to have two disks, one terabyte each, RAID 0, and we'll hit calculate. And so now we are getting the English version of none or no. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and do that for all the strings that we want to localize in the code behind or in this case, the view model. Okay, that should be all of the hard-coded strings in, well, most of the hard-coded strings in the view model class. Uh, I did happen to remember one other place uh, that we did have error message here, so I'm going to go ahead and translate that and get that into the dictionary quickly here as well. And that just says something went wrong, and so I'm going to do the same process I've been doing. Something went wrong and the original translation. And I can just copy that over into the original culture code here and then get it over into the English. And something went wrong with a colon. And then I'm going to grab the name of the key and get back to our code here. And this is going to be localized strings. And then we can get rid of the part that we want to localize here. And we'll just leave the uh, carriage returns there. Okay. All right. So now I believe this is entirely translated. So if we go ahead and run a couple of manual use Test it, tests here. Uh, so I'm the QA guy and I come in and I say, all right, I want four and four and rate one. Exactly two disks are required. That is indeed in English because that is the culture of the machine I'm running on. And so I can see that the results are coming out in English as well. And if I said three, yep, at least four plates and an even number are required. Perfect. All right, so, so long as Google Translate didn't fail us too badly, we should have a uh, successful English version uh, here. Now, let's address one other thing. If you remember, the unit tests were testing for a specific word or, or phrase that was coming back out of the uh, unit that we were testing, the main, main window view model. And so one way that you could fix this is that you could, uh, inside of the constructor of the test, uh, you could set the original language uh, back to the original culture. And so uh, this would need to be included here. That way, all of the tests would still pass. And we can prove that. We can go ahead and say, uh, run tests here. All of our tests ran successfully once we made a small change of putting the instance, uh, we set the culture on the instance of the localized strings. This is why we had that method in our uh, custom localized strings class to be able to set the culture info. And so uh, once we do that, then all of the tests pass. Probably an even better way to do this, since we are actually relying on this text to have our text pass, uh, we may want to consider changing these tests just slightly so that they now take a culture code. And we can move this here down so just before the test, we're going to set the culture code like that. And then here, we're going to have, uh, this one is going to be the original German. Actually, all of these are going to be. So we're going to go ahead and 
paste these in here. Okay, and so now when we run this test, uh, it will also pass. However, we can do uh, some more interesting tests as well. So we can say, all right, I want to test both the original translation and the English translation. And to do that, what I can do is I can take uh, one of these inline data uh, attributes and I believe the English translation of that was none. And we can say this is going to be the English US version. And so now when we run it, we should still have a full set of passing tests. It's just that we're able to test the English version as well. And so if we go look at our test explorer, sure enough, we certainly do. So that would probably be the way I would go ahead and set this test up once localization is done. That way we can test both languages uh, and that would be a little more uh, complete. All right, so we have achieved our second goal of uh, setting up localization in our application. I wanted to point out in this is that the use of that NuGet package is going to make your life way easier. The other thing is that you've also got to look out for some different things when you're testing as well to make sure that if your tests rely on strings and localized strings coming out of your, your system that's under test, make sure that you test uh, that correctly once you do localize. So in the next part of this video, we're going to take a look at uh, MVVM and some things we may want to do to this little application and some things we may not want to do. But uh, in an effort to make it better, we're going to attempt to implement the MVVM pattern. All right, until next time, we'll see you.